It really worries me when I see the question on social media. What is the best note-taking app? And people give single-worded replies to this. Notion, Obsidian, Notability, Evernote, Craft, Bear, OneNote, you name it. There are two problems here. First, the question is asked without context. Is the note-taking app used for personal or business notes? Do you need to show the collected information in another system? Do you need to share the information with your client or team? Do you want to take notes to receive some personal insights and revelation from a conversation? Or do you want to create a knowledge base with a broader purpose? For example, research for a book, scientific research, or creating a business or personal knowledge base. If you provide any of this information, it is much easier to recommend the right app. Oh. However, due to the lack of this context, I come to the second problem, the replies on social media to the question, what is the best note-taking app? The tools recommended are usually hyped or commonly used tools, personal preferences of the answering person, or the worst, replies from the tool companies claiming they have the best tool to solve the problem. There was no problem explained in the first place. It worries me because this way people don't get the best note-taking app or any other productivity tool for their specific needs, but the most popular app that solves another person's problem. This is why I founded the Paperless Movement with the mission to help people and businesses to understand what they need in their digital productivity setup to make it highly effective. Usually there is much more to this than a single worded answer. In this video, I go through the most discussed tools regarding note-taking and show you the differences to make it easier for you to pick the right one. I'm absolutely aware there are so much more solutions to this than ever know the notion. And I will address this in the end of the video. But please feel free to go to the comments below and share your favorite note-taking apps with us. But however, please also let us know the reasoning behind your preference. I cannot wait to see what you come up with and I might pick your tool of choice for one of my future reviews on this channel. I also want to mention that I won't cover any handwriting note-taking apps in this video. I have already published a comprehensive video where I compare Apple Notes, Notability, GoodNotes, OneNote, NoteShelf and Nebu. I link this video in the description below. However, I'll refer to those handwriting note-taking apps in this video to explain some of their limitations and how to overcome those. Let's start with Evernote. I assume this is the tool everybody interested in digital note-taking apps knows about. Well, it makes sense because founded in 2004, it was the first tool that allowed people to collect their notes easily on a digital platform. Instead of folders full of Word documents with notes, Evernote provided a solution back then to make you remember everything by simply searching for it. And this is actually its superpower still to date. If in doubt, a quick search in Evernote might reveal exactly what I'm looking for. To me, this is awesome for one specific use case, my document scans. All my paper documents like contracts, invoices go into Evernote. Evernote will recognize the text on my documents via OCR and makes it searchable. So whenever I need to look something up, I simply search for a keyword or company name and I'll find it. This is something that isn't available in Notion or other tools like Obsidian. Even PDFs that have searchable text embedded cannot be found in Notion or Obsidian via search. You need to manually add information to your database or node in order to find it. And then still, you can only find it by the text snippet you added and not by the whole content within the document. Just imagine having the power to search for text within a 40-page contract PDF in order to find it. All right, if you like to use handwriting note-taking apps, then there is something else you might didn't know about Evernote. NoteShelf, a note-taking app for iPad and Apple Pencil allows you to synchronize your handwritten notes to Evernote. This means you can take handwritten notes in NoteShelf and they appear in Evernote and are also searchable. Yes, your handwriting is searchable in Evernote too. This fact makes Evernote even more powerful because this means you can scan your handwritten paper notes directly to Evernote and make them searchable or you use something like Rocketbook to use your smartphone cam to scan and even automate the organization inside Evernote. If you want to learn more about how this works, I linked the video about the Rocketbook solution in the description. So you see, by listing those features, I could easily claim that Evernote is the best note-taking app, right? Well, if the searchability of scanned document and handwritten notes is what you're looking for, then yes, Evernote is the best you can use. But if you're looking to interconnect your notes or build note databases for better note organization, then keep watching. Evernote will fall short very quickly once I compare it to Notion, because Notion provides the function to backlink and crosslink your notes. 
What the hell are you talking about? Don't worry, in order to explain Notion's note-taking superpowers, I'll use a simple example. Let's say we want to do some research about the person Albert Einstein. In Evernote, as well as in Notion, we can create a new note and title it Albert Einstein. Then let's add some basic information like his birth date, his profession and also a picture of him. So far it is fairly easy to find information in both of our tools. We simply search for the name and we'll find the related note. Now let's assume we want to write a book about the speed of light. So let's create a new node with a book working title. Let's name it Faster Than Light. Is it possible? And then we start researching and adding relevant information to this book note. Whenever we write about Albert Einstein, in Evernote we would add the name Albert Einstein manually. And if we want to link to Albert's page, we can do this by copying the link to his note page and pasting it into the note. This way we made a cross-reference, as you know from Wikipedia. However, look at how this works in Notion. We simply type the at sign and then start writing the name. Without even typing his full name, search results will start listing related note pages. We select Albert Einstein and boom, now we have a direct link to his page. And I have saved time because I didn't need to write a full note title. And look, even his picture is showing up. But it gets better. Let's see what happened on Albert Einstein's note page. Look, there is a backlink. This means that any note we mentioned Albert Einstein in will appear here and with a simple click on it, we'll jump to the page and even to the sentence he was mentioned in. Now let's say in our book we mention Stephen Hawking for the first time. In Evernote we would need to create a new note, then pick the link and paste it into our book note. In Notion, however, we just use the at sign, write Stephen Hawking and then simply go down to say create a new page. Boom, there it is. We click on it and fill out the details as we did for Albert. Now let's say we made some research about Stephen Hawking and wrote a paragraph about something he discovered. Something that we would like to use the exact same way in our book. Well, in Evernote, we would select a paragraph and copy it into our book note, right? This is something I really hate doing. It is duplicating data. This means that when I learn something new that I want to add to this paragraph, I need to update both paragraphs in order to stay consistent with my notes. Now let's see how this works in Notion. I select a paragraph, go to my book note and paste it. And look, it asks me if I want to create a synced block. This is awesome, because now I always know the origin of this paragraph. This means that when I update it in one place, it will update it everywhere else too. This means this paragraph exists only once, but can appear in different places. I think you already see the great potential you have in taking notes with those functionalities. We can build a vast knowledge database and even cross-connect databases that will provide you more insights into your notes than Evernote ever could give you. This video is really just scratching the surface of backlink note-taking. However, if you want to learn more about professional note-taking in Notion, then I invite you to check out my Notion course in the description below. There you learn all you need to know in order to build your own interconnected knowledge base inside Notion. I also want to point out that those functionalities are not limited to Notion. In 2021, there was an explosion of new productivity tools that all provide this functionality or even advanced features. Obsidian, Rome Research, RemNode, Bear, Apple Note, to just name a few. However, in this video, the goal is to explain to you the fundamental functionality of backlinks and cross-linking. What tool you eventually pick that provides this functionality is personal preference. In my opinion, Notion is the easiest to handle if you don't want to use complex tools and it has proper database functionality, something that, for example, Obsidian doesn't provide. I'm fully aware that there are reasons to use Obsidian over Notion. So if you want me to make a Notion versus Obsidian video, then let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe so you won't miss its release. Suppose you want to further improve your digital note-taking system, then make sure to watch this video next where you learn the fundamental rules of digital note-taking you need to know in order to find specific notes whenever you need them and how to avoid scattering your information. And if you are serious about leveling up your overall digital productivity system end to end, then check out our iCore Mastery program, where you learn how to become more productive in a tool agnostic way. Digital productivity doesn't need to be complicated. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so I can catch you up next time.